So I'm going to talk you through an extract analysis with a focus on masculinity. So first of all, I suggest you think about an episode or a moment within the text which you think is important in terms of Leo understanding or exploring what it is to, to be a man, or a moment perhaps where he is unaware of you know, his own focus on the masculinity around him. So I chose the moment towards the end of chapter 12 at the cricket game where he catches the cricket ball and there's this moment where he, he feels finally like a man and he feels like he's treated by those around him as an adult male or as you know, a proper man. So the first thing that I suggest you do is you reread the extract and you think a little bit about exactly which section you want to focus on. So I initially included the paragraph above this, but actually it wasn't as relevant to masculinity. So I got rid of that. So have, you know, a little bit, perhaps about a page, a page and a half worth of text to focus on, first of all. Then the first thing I want you to do in terms of annotation and analysis is to identify the different associations you see in this extract with masculinity. So I want you to think about how what you associate with masculinity in this extract. So in this extract for me, physicality was one of the main things that I think is important here and this connection to sporting prowess and victory. Secondly, in this extract, what's really important is how masculinity is linked to power over females and perhaps even masculinity is associated with kind of a, a duplicity or perhaps a secrecy shared with females. There's a section um, towards the end uh, where, where, the, where the crowd, you know, look towards the victors or the 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 players who really excelled in this match and they all applaud Ted all except one Marion I noticed didn't look up and Leo is very much aware of the relationship at this point so that he notices this kind of highlights that idea of masculinity is linked to this kind of secrecy with females this inner connection that he isn't actually able to to explore himself yet he isn't able to to really understand fully what's going on. And then finally, I thought masculinity was important here in terms of the contradictions. So there's these kind of there's this confusion where there's this confusion over the identity of a man. There's a, the rigid rigidity of Lord Trimmingham. He says something um, as he congratulates Leo on his catch, he says something along the lines of we find it. Ah, his congratulations were the more precious because they were reserved and understated. They might, in fact, have been addressed to a man, and it was as a man, and not by any means the least of men, that I joined the group who were making their way back to the pavilion. This idea that masculinity is kind of slightly understated. Um, there's a grandeur there and a sense of power, but it's understated. And that's con contrasted with the masculinity associated with Ted, this kind of honesty and kind of ge sense of being genuine. Um, Ted replies, um, Leo says to Ted, I'm sorry, Ted, I didn't really mean to catch you out. And he says back, well, that's very handsome of you. It was a damned good catch anyway. I never thought you'd hold it. There's that sense that, I don't, sorry about the, the errors there. I've copied this text from the online ones. There's a few errors. He says, I never thought you'd hold it. And that, that idea that there's that kind of honesty that he didn't necessarily think Leo was up to it. And there's that, and often I think you treat, you know, children with a sense of, you kind of hide this truth, you skirt around the truth. And there's a kind of an honesty there that's quite bold and linked to that kind of rawness and passion of Ted. So once you've done that, I've got kind of three main ideas. Secondly, start to zoom in on some of the imagery, the narrative perspective, the language, look at the tone and connotations of things associated with these, the different kind of masculinities that you have identified, first of all. 
Um, so, for example, you might pick up on um, imagery first of all. I think about what type of imagery. Is it visual? Is it auditory? Is it gustatory to do with taste? Or is it um, olfactory to do with smell? And olfactory imagery is really important in this text. Um, and it's very much associated with kind of a sexual awakening with Leo. So any imagery around smell is really interesting for us to have a little think about. Um, so I um, focused on a few little sections of visual imagery. At the start, there's this moment where Leo saw, sees Ted um, swinging, the, swinging and hitting the ball towards him. And it travelled towards him from Ted on a rising straight line like a cable stretched between us, between us. And there's this connection here, which I think is quite visually powerful. Um, and it links this idea that Ted and Leo are connected. And Leo almost sees perhaps a sense of himself in Ted. Ted is also a, an outsider, a bit like Leo. He's someone who isn't quite of the right, you know, right class. He doesn't quite fit in. Um, but there is this sense with the, you know, with a cable stretch, there's a sense of strain there and there's a sense of perhaps distrust, perhaps linked to Marion and the kind of the, his, his own awakening in the role of go-between that he is um, undertaking. And I want you to think a little bit about connotations. Now I've thrown a, two new terms in here, um, internal connotations and external connotations. Um, and I think it's quite interesting for us to divide these up. So internal connotations are connotations associated with something inside the text, whereas external connotations are those derived from social realities outside the text. So things in everyday real life that we might link to an image. So in so I picked up on the image, the visual imagery of a man encouraged to hold a stiff upper lip. That's somewhere here. Here we go. The, Personal feelings of cricketers were concealed behind their stiff upper lips. Here, you know, masculinity is very much associated with that rigidity of Lord Trimmingham's um, identity. So, internal connotations, we might link that stiff upper lip to Lord Trimmingham's reserved nature. We might also link it to Marx's quite fixed rules about conduct, about what to wear and how to treat those around you. You know, he's told rather than fold up his clothes as he's, you know, which is quite respectful and he's been taught that from his mother. He's told to just leave clothes on the floor and the maid will pick them up. There's that sense of, you know, lack of care and um, kind of an abuse of power from the upper class. And then we might contrast that to external or develop our interpretation with external connotations. The idea that um, stiff upper lip is perhaps something slightly old fashioned, it's traditional, it perhaps for me, I think of something that's quite repressed, um, quite fixed and stern. And it has, I think for me, it has much more negative connotations. Um, finally, you might think about some moments of in interest in terms of punctuation. So um, perhaps, you know, if there's a you know, what type of sentences are you coming across? Here we have these lists of interrogatives um, and these dashes as well around his around that moment where he approaches Ted. And he's much more hesitant here. And these lists of questions, these interrogatives, I think underline his need for approval from Ted. I think for Leo at this moment, there's this idea that the masculinity... Um, that is perhaps aligned with Ted, this kind of rawness, this honesty, this passion is something that Leo is, is seeking towards more than perhaps the masculinity he sees in Lord Trimmingham. Perhaps sometimes he's unaware of that, but I think as the older Leo looks back, he, he realises this, uh, this desire that he wishes he'd, he'd, he'd sort of gone for the, the Ted's masculinity more. So yet, how would he take it? What were his feelings? This sense of fast pace, all these questions, you know, this sense of doubt that clouds the younger Leo, this linking to that idea of knowing and not knowing. He isn't, he isn't, un, he isn't able to decode um, what he sees around him. Okay, so that's kind of what I'd like you to do um, for this analysis. 
um, and if you could just record yourself um, you could do it how I've done it kind of slowly take take um, us through a, a particular moment a particular scene and just explore some interesting moments um, I'd probably suggest spending a little bit more time on the imagery connotations punctuation and language than I have but I just wanted to give you a bit of a flavor of what to do so hopefully that's been really helpful and I look forward to hearing your ideas in our sharing section of the lesson.